Hello, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music producer. Welcome to Mastering Ableton Live, lesson 5 I think it is, and today we will be talking about how to save and export. With this video I finish my 4 part series on chapter 4 in the manual. I wanted to keep the saving and exporting section separate because often we don't realize how many different options are available to us. So let's start with the biggest and most obvious one. You can save your complete live set and saving that will store everything it contains including all the clips, their positions and settings for devices and controls. It is important to remember that even though you are saving your clips, your clips need a reference audio file. You may remember from a previous video I explained that clips aren't audio files in themselves, although they sound like it. They are actually just packages of data that get applied to a specific audio clip. This audio clip typically isn't saved with your Ableton Live set, although you can do that, I'll get to that later. But this audio clip will sit somewhere on your hard drive. If you move this audio clip, then your actual clip inside your Ableton Live set will lose this reference and won't be able to sound anything. Not to worry though, if you have moved the audio file, you can just redirect the clip to where the audio file is sitting or move the audio file back. If you want the links between samples and their clips to be preserved, you can do this with a special command called collect and save. This makes a copy of each sample and stores it in the project folder along with the live set. So even if you move that other audio file, as long as you don't move this copied sample that is now stored in your project folder, you shouldn't ever lose this reference audio. To prevent a live set from containing broken file references, you choose the Manage Files command from the File menu, click the Manage Set button, unfold the triangular shaped fold button in the external file section, and here you'll find a bunch of other options. The File menu's Collect All and Save command is a shortcut that collects and saves all external files referenced by the current set, including those from Live's core library or other installed packs. Note that this can cause a lot of copying, especially if your Live set uses large multi-sample collections, so just be aware of how much data you're using. A separate save button in the clip view saves a set of default clip setting along with the sample, so that each time the sample is dragged into the program, it will automatically appear with these settings. This is especially useful if you have made warp settings for a clip and want to use it in multiple live sets. Hello, my name is Micah Watson and I'm a composer and music Exporting audio from live can be done from both the session and arrangement views. By default, live will export the audio coming through on the master output as an audio file of your specifications via the export audio video. Live can also export individual MIDI clips as MIDI files. Exporting and saving material for later use in live can be done very conveniently with the live clip format. Session view clips can be dragged back out of a live set to the browser and thereby exported to the disk as live clips. As you may have gathered, live clips are a very powerful way of storing ideas as they save not only the clips clip view settings but also the corresponding tracks instruments and effects chains. Live clips in the browser can be previewed and added to any open live set just like simple files. In the live set, they restore the original clip's creative options. One thing that I want to note that isn't explicitly in the manual on this is that if you save a live set with all your different parameters changed on your effects chains, it will save these effects chains as they are, but it won't actually overwrite the preset you're using. So if you've used an effects chain and you've used a particular preset and you actually want to store this preset for use in a completely different live set, then you need to save this preset and find a convenient place to store it where you'll remember it and be able to find it. Using live clips, you can build your own personalized library of MIDI sequences with matching instruments and effects. So for instance, a MIDI drum pattern with the associated impulse and effect settings. You could reuse this in different tracks by just finding the actual clip that you used instead of opening an old live set and then kind of dragging and dropping it or whatever other roundabout way there might be to go about this. 
You can also build your own personalized library of different regions or loops referencing the same source file. This will save a lot of hard disk space because if you've got clips that are all referencing the same audio file, if the clips are different, chances are the audio is going to sound very different too. But because you're not saving the audio file separately with each one, you'll get a whole lot of options at your fingertips without taking up all your hard disk space. By saving live clips, you can also create variations of a sample loop created by applying warp markers, clip envelopes, or effects. And finally, the thing that I probably use the most is building a library of ideas that may not fit your current project, but could be useful in the future. Building these personalized libraries are really cool and a lot of fun, but I can assure you that unless you are organized and actually naming them consistently, storing them in the right folders consistently, or have some way of being able to find them without spending hours looking for it, so I urge you, if you're just saving things without thinking about it, one of the best things you can do for yourself in music production is to get some kind of system. It doesn't have to be someone else's system, but as long as it makes sense to you and as long as it's consistent, it will really help. Because otherwise you can build up a whole library but never use it because it's actually just too overwhelming to find the clip you're looking for. And I know this from personal experience. We will be starting with chapter 5, which is managing files and sets, ironically enough. And all of these things should help you with your workflow as well. If you have any specific questions, feel free to leave a comment or DM me on YouTube. All right, bye.